John, I was trying to catch up with you and Emily. She wasn't supposed to leave her seat. I'm Carla. Joan had to go home sick. But you were with my my daughter, Emily. Yeah, she was lost. I took her up to the owner's box. Come on, we'll go get her. With another episode of the Jean Pod Van Dam cast. Hell yeah. It is Jeff and John in studio, and we are here to take on 1995's sudden death. <laughs> Jeff, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. I I would like body checked a bunch of people on my way over to the studio. Yeah, man. This film just had me hyped. I and don't blame you. I set three people on fire with a super soaker just thinking about it. I, I set some C4 all around the neighborhood. <laughs> so. And explained how dangerous it was to people. Yeah, except it was basically just Play-Doh. <laughs> and uh, my neighbors, they were like, John, what are you doing? You've been watching Van Damme again, haven't you? <laughs> so anyway, we're going to get into this. We're going to review it. It's rated R action crime thriller. An hour and 51 minutes long. Yeah, it was a longer that one. It was a long Van Damme movie. Not much credits either. Like, I remember watching it and like looking at the ticker towards the end. Yeah. Like, the credits were like three minutes long. Yeah, yeah, that was it. And it, was, it was done. It was like, hey, we're going to wait up to the last second for this film. It's a former fireman taking on a group of terrorists holding the vice president and others hostage during the seventh game of the <laughs> NHL Stanley Cup finals. You can't make this stuff up. Nope. And I like I don't know who to question who like was like, <laughs> "Hey, we're going to put this film through." Like who greenlit this film? Like what was it the NHL who were like, "Hey, yeah. we want Van Damme." Uh, hockey's getting popular in the 90s. Let, let's do this thing together. Or was it just some dude who had a bunch of money who's like, I like hockey. I like Van Damme. <laughs> so basically like a rich version of me. Yeah. So, you know, I hope they make a sudden death too. Hell yeah. It was released December 22nd, 1995. What a Christmas treasure. That would be <laughs> the greatest Christmas present I know that, You know, it's funny because like I remember uh... – this movie got called Die Hard on Ice. That's, an, <laughs> that's another uh, parallel with it because yeah, it came man. out as a Christmas release. Yep. Yeah, totally. And the tagline is, tonight, 17,000 hockey fans have been taken hostage, <laughs> but just one of them knows it. <laughs> that's kind of like not as cool as I thought it'd be. No, and a little misleading because the, the terrorists knew it too. Yeah, you think- uh, Not to would... mention the, the vice president and the Secret Service. Yeah, yeah. That you would think I'm gonna call bullshit on that tagline. Yep, yep. A director was Peter Hyams. Writers were Karen Elise Baldwin and Jean Quintano. Uh, apparently, this was a story beforehand. So Karen wrote this. Story yeah, I saw that. Oh. And, and Jean <laughs> Quintano did the screenplay of and it. And then Jean Claude Van Damme threw the lady into the dishwasher. And <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to read that story. Yep. Oh yeah, me too. And uh, if you don't know already, we said. Uh, Van Damme plays Darren McCord, and Powers Booth is the bad guy. He's Joshua Foss. Raymond J. Barry is the vice president. And Whitney Wright was Emily McCord, Van Damme's daughter. And Ross Mallinger was Tyler McCord, Van Damme's son in it. That kid was, was pretty annoying. I don't like child actors. I never did. Yeah, you know, child actors, especially it seemed like in the '90s, were just yeah. Very they all, they over all the had top. bowl cuts. And... All had bowl cuts, Ugh. exactly. Although this kid in this movie was the least stupid, like kid in a movie. Yeah, I've yeah, seen he was. Situ- yeah, he's he actually he like bad. yeah. His sister actually... was really bad. Yeah, his, his sister yeah, was. They, they... Yeah. But yeah, so uh, basically, if you want to know, Powers Booth. Well, he was Senator Rourke in Sin City. Yes. He was the leader of the Cowboys in Tombstone. Leader of the Cowboys in Tombstone, yeah. 
He was in Agents of Shield, the television series. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, that was. I think he was first or second season. He I only gets say. better with age too. Yeah, like, I know, he gets just more menacing, and his voice gets more gravelly. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, he was in Guns, Girls, and Gambling. That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, I like the I like the sound of that. He was in the Hatfields and McCoys. <laughs> The Avengers, he was on the World Security Council. Holy shit, that's right. I totally forgot yep, about that. Yep. You could see his craggy silhouette. Yep. MacGruber, Colonel Faith. <laughs> Still he, haven't seen that. President Noah Daniels in 24. Man, he's, he's he got a lot He played the president? Too, yep, I guess so. Who the hell got that guy elected? I don't know, but it's kind of funny because he he voted for the vice president, yeah. apparently. And he should have death. voted for the president. but you That's know. what I was thinking, too, <laughs> when that happened. So, you know, I vicariously voted for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, that would have that would have been good if they <laughs> said it like that, basically. Like, I voted for you and the president, but no, they... He had a write-in vote said, for yeah. the vice president. Yep, I made sure that I specifically, I crossed out the president's name and put <laughs> yours down. And you didn't win. All right, so getting into the movie, like the opening scene just starts <laughs> up and it's it's, it's jarring. Already, yeah, <laughs> it's already action packed, a big fire. You're thinking, what the heck's going on? And I watch him backdraft. I, <laughs> I thought know. of backdraft right away too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and Van Dam ends up he's trying to save this little girl and he's stuck. All this debris fell down on him and he's calling for help with his fellow firefighters. He's telling her everything's going to be okay. Then more stuff falls on both of them. The firefighters get in there, and then dun, 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 she's dead. Yep. She died of, like, fright or something? I don't really... I, I don't know. She suffocated. I don't know. She kind of, like, looked at him. She did the thing, like, they probably did 20 takes of trying to get her to, like, do a good job pretending she was dead, <laughs> but she couldn't kept, like, I heard stop that, moving her eyes. I heard that she actually died of natural causes. That's, they that's used true. That. That's, yeah, that's actually what happened. Yes. Is there, she's a character actor. Right, right. She went full, deserves, full hog. Deserves an movie. Oscar, in my opinion. Yeah, I I hear you there. I agree. So we cut to that, and it's two years later, game day, four <laughs> hours till face-off. That's exactly what yeah, it says. so out of left field. And we find out that the vice president is going to game seven between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Chicago Blackhawks. And this is when I said, I didn't know Al Gore was such a hockey fan. Yeah. <laughs> I had no clue, but apparently he is. Yeah. We see some dudes roll up, smack into the back of the security cop car, say, oh, we're looking for our dog. <laughs> yeah. And that's then like, they end up like, shooting the guys. That's like the cheesiest fake line of all time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How bad is the damage? <laughs> Kill them. Van Dam decides to just show up at his ex-wife's house uh, with, while his uh, son's stepdad is playing hockey with him. Classic Van Dam. Yep, classic Van Dam move. And he's like, I thought I would take the kids to the game. <laughs> I got two tickets. And she's like... Ah, smart idea, Darren. There's going to be three. You know, he's like, I end the fire security for this game. <laughs> and so, like, that, it's, it's the son's I just birthday. Side note the uh, stepdad is extremely understanding in that situation. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, he totally was. Like, he played the role of basically kind of the perfect stepdad. Yeah. You know, he, he's treating uh, Darren's son like his own. He's encouraging him to play hockey. Not overly protective of the biological father. Right. And, you know, he rolls up and he's like, oh, hey, Darren. And he actually kind of backs him up in some spots. And, and you know, he Van Dam gets the kids f for a whole day the next day, but shows up out of nowhere and is like, hey, it's his birthday. I'm going to take him without even asking the mom. It's probably because they mentioned that he was a, a little psycho, so he didn't want any trouble. That's true, too. He probably had some really bad PTSD <laughs> and, and would feel that he could bring fire down upon his ex-wife if need be. I mean, a guy guy does know how to demolish any building instantaneously, yep. Yep, as exactly. you later find out. Yep. And so the wife uh, ends up agreeing after she reluctantly does, and, and with the help of the stepfather- is like okay. He's like, hey, are those uh, game seven tickets? <laughs> Which I mean, yeah. that would be a big deal. That is, fair. and those were good seats too. Yeah, man. they were really good seats. Holy crap! How did Van Dam get that for like only being part time fire security? <laughs> he 
probably beat the shit out of somebody. That's true. Or he did the splits for like 20 minutes <laughs> straight. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as a aerobics instructor, he got the uh, the wife of the owner uh, of the Pittsburgh Penguins to give him tickets. So the uh, baddies are timing some things out. They put this stuffed penguin in the middle of a table. They're, like, throwing popcorn and bags up into the vans, and they all <laughs> leave the building as they put the timer on, and, and once this egg timer goes off, the penguin blows up. It makes uh, it's, it sort of makes sense later in the movie, but not really. Yeah, yeah. They were all trying to, like, say, Hey, this all has to be timed perfectly. Yeah, I mean, what I think wasn't the, was the C four hidden in the penguin mascot, like stuffed penguins or? Yeah, that... yeah. At first, it was. Yep, it, it totally was because later on in the scene, I was trying to figure that out. I was like, why is there a bunch of ripped up stuffed penguins? Yeah, that's what okay. I, I, well, I thought. Well, sense. wait. Yeah, I, I guess it makes sense, sort of. <laughs> like, right. Well, why yeah. even bother explaining how they got the C four into the building? Yeah, I mean, like they yeah. could have just had them like acting like they're smuggling stuff. Yeah, no, it was, that was, this whole movie is a little weird. Yeah. So then we switch over to an old lady who is, like, planting flowers or whatnot in front of her house, and a dude walks up, shows her his gun, and is like, you're going to act like I'm your favorite nephew, and let me in. <laughs> this guy was a character, too. Oh, dude, like, he, he had totally a was. frilly pink button-up shirt. Yes, yes, and a uh, cross earring, dangling earring. <laughs> A la, a la Shawn Michaels. Yeah, yeah dude. He, he totally looked like a Latino <laughs> Shawn Michaels, except, you know, cut the mullet, and yep. but just still had that poof in the front. We have 90 minutes until face-off, and then we, we end up getting into the building, basically, and Van Damme's talking with uh, this woman, and he's telling her, can his daughter go see Icy? And the son's like, why would you want to see Icy? It's just a fat guy in a suit. And then Van Damme's like, that blonde you're staring at, she's the fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> then we go down into the uh, Penguin's locker room where it's basically any kid's or grown man's fantasy to go into the uh, hockey locker yes, room and see all I the guys about, around there. I dream about it every night. Luke Robitaille waved at me. <laughs> uh, you know, Robitaille. I love they kept pushing Robitaille in this film. <laughs> and uh, Van Damme was like talking to him. And they have just the, the little bit of French back and forth. And Robitaille's like, I saw something along the lines, like, I think we're going to fuck them up yeah. or something like that. <laughs> and Dan kind of gives that expression. And son's like, what do you say? He's confident that they will win. <laughs> and then that Brett Tolliver line, which was hilarious, he's like, Tolliver doesn't have a rocking chair. And he's yeah. like, wait, what? <laughs> and Van Damme's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> My dad thinks that you need a rocking chair. <laughs> How about I show him? That, that was a, a pretty funny back and forth. Yeah. Then it says 45 minutes until face off. I liked how the countdown was until the face off. Yeah. And, like, and then it stopped. The period. Yep. They had, yeah, they just had the countdown at the periods. Right. Or... Right. Exactly. Then it was, it it was like from... 24, but hockey themed. Yeah, yep, it really was. It uh, 24 stole from yeah, this. Yeah, way to go, 24. So then we get 20 minutes until face-off, and uh, the VP is coming in. That weird dude is still with the old lady. We still have no clue why he is. <laughs> then we're we're back in the locker room. The vice president shows up, and Tuckerman's naked. And the <laughs> VP actually says, nice outfit, Tuckerman. Yeah. And then takes off after he wishes him luck. And it wasn't like he was wearing his jock on his head and then yeah, he yeah. Put his head. he's like can't like, you just put your jock <laughs> yeah, on it all put it he just puts head. it on his head <laughs> that was that was pretty funny man uh we that was an ass shot there it wasn't oh no, yeah it no was Van the ass Van shot of the ass film shot, but yeah. yeah we got an ass shot for the film we end up finding out that the old lady is the chef's wife and i kind of forgot to mention but like the chef who's preparing all the meals plays uh, an important role in this as the security he prepares all the food them, for everyone yeah Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah, he, but no, he's he's the chief of security for some reason. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're like, if there's someone you don't know, they're not allowed in. This Everyone has to go through this guy, the chef. So we find out that uh, the old lady's the chef's wife. She calls him up. He gets on the phone. She's saying along the lines of, they will not hurt me if you do as I say. They're gonna, or if you don't, they're gonna kill me. When you go to the VP's box, you'll take two new assistants with security men and get them in the box. And uh, then it goes two minutes until face off. 
we get an awesome national anthem. Everyone's yeah. very excited for this. Oh yeah. And uh we end up finding out hey the president or the vice president is being held hostage and Powers Booth is just like fuck your couch. <laughs> they kill a bunch of dudes and then mm-hmm. they they switch back to the old lady. After the national anthem, Shawn Michaels shoots the old lady and kills her. And I was like, whoa, that was really surprising to me. Yeah, those guys play rough. There's some gun jokes being thrown around. And then the chef dies. And meanwhile, I realized through the movie, the daughter really loves stamps. Yes. She stamped Van Damme's hand. She stamped that old dude's hand when she was going into Mm -hmm. the arena. And she ends up stamping Powers Booth's hand. She's going to work at a uh, club later in life. I think make so, sure yeah. Make sure everyone's over 21. Like under yeah. 21? <laughs> Pop. They had these crazy high-tech computers that were in these uh, silver metal briefcases mm-hmm. that they opened up, and we found out that they're all connected connected to these crazy bank accounts from uh-huh. all over the world. These in different, uh, yeah, some were in Arabic, some were in English. Some yeah, were... something like Japanese, Chinese. It was crazy. Pretty cool idea. And so... Essentially, what they ended up wanting to do is uh, have, obviously, take Vice President, hold him hostage, and have, like, what was it, a billion dollars? Yeah, one point something billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, it was was such an odd. It was like, yeah, like $1.2 billion. Yeah, it was a bunch of frozen bank accounts. Yeah, and and so they'd have to to deposit all throughout these bank accounts. And it was set up so it would do it each period, you know, this amount for this first period, this amount, second period, this amount, third period. If you didn't, someone dies in the first. It was two people die in the or one person dies in the first, two people in the second. Mm -hmm. And then the building goes kaboom in the third. A bit of an escalation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. (laughs) So I was like, then I'm going to kill all of them. And then boom, kill 17,000 fans. So we, we switch back and the kids are sitting in their seats. And the girl's like, I want a Sprite. No, I want a Coke. No, I want a Sprite. And the boy mocks her and then shoots her with a super soaker. Oh, man. And then Those she are drops... so big at the time. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> she drops her uh, drink all over her lap after Van Damme tells the kids, hey, sit here. Don't move at all. Even if you have to poop. Even if you have to poop. He even said that. Yep. And she gets up and she walks away because she can't listen. Yep, damn she was just kids. So, yeah, so infuriated. Kids don't like to listen. <laughs> and then that's the end of the first period, and the mayor's wife dies. She gets shot. Uh, she couldn't stop crying. It was annoying everyone. It was annoying yeah. me. It was, yes. So I was <laughs> really excited that he chose her first. <laughs> Thank you, Powers. She, she went down, and uh, the little girl goes into the bathroom, sees Icy the penguin, And they're the mascot. (laughs) And then a dead woman. And she's like, what? And then she just stands there staring at Icy as Icy tries to put the dead woman back into the stall. (laughs) Well, to be fair, it's it's not an everyday situation. I'd be confused, too. Yeah, but, like, it wouldn't take me that long. As soon as I I saw a a penguin, like, I I would know shit was up. I'd be like, (laughs) okay, I'm out of here. Bye. She kind of starts to escape as the period ends and everyone starts going into the bathrooms, but the penguin gets a hold of her. She ends up basically um, taking her into the vice president's suite, and so now Van Damme's daughter is a part of the hostage Mm -hmm. group. We get some foreshadowing after Van Damme talks with the son, which is like, the building is falling down around (laughs) you. You don't move. And boy, and did he listen. There is some crazy, like, violence in this film. Like, yes. The, the woman, Icy, uh, I don't even know what she was. Like, she was a part of part of the gang. But yeah. Part of the baddies. It was a woman baddie. They, had a, they needed a woman baddie to get into the ladies' restroom so yep. it wouldn't be awkward. Yep. Shoots the one security guard point blank in the head. And I think the thing that had me cracking up was she s- takes him into the elevator mm-hmm. with the little girl. And they're going up, they're riding up, and then the guy goes, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you just got shot point blank in the like head. Right and then in the she, middle of the forehead. Yeah, and then she shoots him two more times to kill him. Like, I was like, that's overkill. It's the mysteries of the human brain. Yeah, you're right. You're right there. So uh, she wanted to make sure that he was really dead. 
And then she's going to shoot the little girl in the yeah, head. And, and the, the gun was out of ammo. <laughs> yeah, that, that great line, you owe me a Mother's Day card. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, she was, was great. Yeah, that was, that was weird, man. That was weird. Oh, man. Van Damme ends up getting into a fight with her. and That like, is the greatest fight scene. Holy in, crap. Oh, yeah, my man. God. The fight scene with Icy the Penguin yep. in the kitchen. And, I mean, she is in full penguin garb. Like, the she whole time. The it doesn't head, like head off. The head doesn't get knocked off or anything. No, no. <laughs> he tries stabbing her in the stomach, even though that's like a padding of cushion yeah. big time. <laughs> it was, like, absolutely crazy. And the cool thing about this, they, like, totally weren't like, you know what? She's a woman. Van Damme would kick her ass. No, so far we've seen pretty much in all Van Damme films, if a woman's fighting, she's pretty badass. Yeah. It's not like, hey, uh, she's not good until she faces a man and then gets uh, shit kicked out of her. Mm. Like you kind of would expect in the 80s and 90s, they'd be like, oh, woman fighter? No way. No, man. Like a lot of his films, they're actually pretty badass women, man. And especially this one. This honestly might be one of the (laughs) biggest fights. Yeah, it it was the longest fight scene in the movie, I'm pretty sure. Bolo Young doesn't have anything on this woman <laughs> in, in the fight scene. This one went on and on in the kitchen. They utilize that kitchen so well, yeah. too. So much so, she ends up like kind of almost getting the upper hand on him. He finds the pepper flakes and just throws it into the mouth <laughs> of the bird, which is the eyes her, where she can see out of. So it gets in her eyes. She ends up getting stuck into the high-powered dishwashing rack. Uh, I, it took um, me a minute to figure out what that was supposed to be when she got stuck in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, for all the trays. Uh-huh. You put the trays in, and they end up power washing them. But uh, before that, he dunked her hand in the hot oil. Yeah, the that fry was really oil. rough. Oh, man. And then her head got stuck in a uh, ventilation fan, yep. which was apparently like a super-powered oh, ventilation yeah, fan. This that, was like, like chopped off half of her mascot head. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate <laughs> Factory, like uh, fizz- fizzy lifting drinks fan, man. <laughs> It, it it ripped off like the eye of icy, so yep. icy was a pirate now. Yeah, and... half blinded, couldn't see very well. Yeah, so she ends the up... whole. Uh, yeah, the this was probably the best fight scene in the movie. Oh, actually. dude, totally, man. <laughs> like, I, honestly, this might be one of the best. I fight was scenes dying because she was like throwing time. high kicks and like yeah, in, in the, the mascot suit. costume in the suit, man. They're, like, give I it was, up for her. I, I was watching this in a coffee house and I was dying laughing the whole time. Yeah, they were all staring so they're like, at me. what the heck's wrong with this guy? <laughs> No, man. Could you imagine what she would have done if she wasn't wearing that suit? I think, like, I think the suit gave her an advantage. Oh, yeah, that's it's, true, It's too. like armor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He tried stabbing her, Yeah, and that suit protected her a lot. <laughs> she could have been decapitated. She could have been stabbed and gutted. It's it true. Was, it was Pepper Flakes that ended up helping. <laughs> and then uh, thanks to the washing machine, the tray line, she ends up choking out on the head and basically head, getting... Head. Scolding hot water blasted yeah, in her face. Yeah, it's a really rough way to go. It yeah. looks really graphic. And uh, all of a sudden, like, Van Damme's going on off to find security. He finds the the original, we're looking for my missing dog, yeah. Daddy. And he's just like, my daughter, they took her. And, and so the guy's going in there, and uh, they have a crazy fight scene, too. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, all the meanwhile, we end up starting to find out that Powers Booth is actually one of the U.S.'s own. He's part uh-huh. of CIA. He makes some mention about basically. Wait, uh, wasn't he Secret Service? Was he Secret Service? I thought he was, he was... the Treasury section of Secret Service, right? Where oh, said, I, oh, I don't you're know. Treasury. I, I just yeah, they made the line with the counterfeit thing. Uh huh. Yeah, that's mention... it's the other branch of the Secret Service. Little known fact. Yeah. Most of the Secret Service is dedicated to uh, counterfeit detection and uh, arrests. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so uh, they basically ha- talk about that, and you're thinking, oh, okay. All the meanwhile, we're still talking to a dude named Hallmark, who's <laughs> like the head of the Secret Service agency outside, still can't figure out how this happened. And he's going back and forth with Powers on the phone, and you're thinking, oh, no, what's going to happen? All the meanwhile... Van Damme has another kitchen fight scene with <laughs> yeah. this dude this time. Where the hell did that lady go that died in the penguin I suit? was wondering like, the same thing. Like, did she just run away? Did they, like, hide her body? Or they something? had to hide her body. Like, uh, but they never they never went back to it. He was like, yeah. she was just right here. And, and it kind of made, I don't know, it would have been funny for her because, like, yeah, you fought a big, giant penguin. Yeah. Dude. Okay. <laughs> so Van Damme basically, like, has the dude... 
on dry ice. Like yeah. he's putting his face down on dry ice, asking him questions. The guy gives up on him and like is telling him and dude goes to stab Van Dam. Van Dam breaks off a chicken bone and stabs it right into the neck. Yeah, it was really really graphic. It was awesome. Yeah, dude. That was that was crazy. Death by chicken bone. <laughs> so then uh Van Dam's making his way around. He ends up in like some weird sweet like office. He keeps finding these places where there's no one at in this crowded stadium. Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, like no one's anywhere else in the places that he goes to, but he finds Icy, like the original, the, the blonde woman who played Icy, and she's dead, shot in the forehead. And uh, he's rummaging through uh, some drawers and whatnot, finds the Zippo lighter fluid and the uh, the Zippo light. And so he's he's starting to make things weapons in his brain. He's MacGyvering shit up. <laughs> he totally was. It was. And uh, we end up seeing the dude. There's helicopters flying over the arena now, trying to see what's going on. Shawn Michaels is blowing <laughs> off a bazooka. Fucking knocks off one of the helicopters, and one of the one of the army men falls out and lands right <laughs> on top of that car. And somehow no one in the stadium has any idea what's going on. Yeah, and then they start sending in undercover dudes to try to do things, but they have the security system hacked. So they're seeing all these uh, security guy, all, all all these undercover agents, and they make a line about like, oh, if they like hockey so much, we should put them on ice. <laughs> <laughs> so then ends up having a Zamboni driver. <laughs> a Zamboni is driving outside. By a corpse. By, yeah, the poor dead Zamboni driver. What did he ever do to anyone? The Zamboni crashes into the cop cars, opens up, explodes, and those dudes that were sent in <laughs> were dead, chilled on ice in the Zamboni. They have a sense of humor. You have to give them that. I love uh, Van Dam is like looking through the phone after he's talking to Hallmark after he finds the phone, thinking, "Oh, hey, we're finally gonna turn this whole stuff around." Uh, somehow they end up cutting the phone service off on him, and then uh, Van Dam slams it into the glass, breaking it. And that <laughs> old dude was like, "Don't get so worked up; they'll win." Because <laughs> the Penguins were down a goal at this point. Van Dam ends up finding the first bomb. He basically cuts it i'm like how the hell does he know how to cut it <laughs> you know well, like, you know he's a fireman yeah I, I, I guess so i didn't know that they trained bomb... him in a demolition yeah, yeah i didn't expertise know expertise and... bomb detonation was <laughs> was one thing that you trained in <laughs> the second period ends mayor gets shot the mayor is dead and uh van damme cuts both the wires and everything is okay van damme somehow talks to like the guy who controls the signage outside the arena which Van Dam gets a message off talking about how the whole place is rigged with C4. Shawn Michaels hits that sign with the bazooka. We end up going into the third period. Van Dam makes a crazy awesome dart gun. Yeah, with a drill a fire bit. extinguisher, a drill bit, and finds another bomb, shoots the like dart gun off into a dude's neck and kills him. After his big spiel about how C4 is the yeah, most... <laughs> yeah, dangerous. Yeah, yep, yeah, that was pretty funny. And uh, Hallmark comes to the rescue after another dude shows up. And Van Damme's like, oh, okay. Van Damme just smacks him. And he's like, oh, what was that for? He's like, for not or for doing your job half-assed <laughs> and not uh, saving the vice president. And then what do we find out? Dun, dun, dun. Hallmark was in on it the it's whole true. time. The so whole here you time. think between him and Powers – Talking back and forth, negotiating, it meant nothing. They were already doing this. Yep, it was all a so, facade. That son of a bitch. And not only that, but uh, Jean Claude Van Damme told him that he knew where most of the bombs were. Right, he tells him where the bombs are. He tells him where his kid's sitting at in D10. Yeah, the, ex <clears throat> the exact same seat. Yeah, and uh, Hallmark goes down to the kid and he's like, "Hey, your dad wants to meet you." Trying to convince the kid, but the kid's like a huge smart ass to Hallmark <laughs> basically like gets Hallmark to leave him alone. I I was laughing at that. Oh yeah. He's like, well, you know, my dad told me not to move and you know, he outsmarted him. Yeah. He out outsmarted a secret service agent, man. Good, <laughs> good going kid. You're, yep. you're, you're fit to protect the president, <laughs> the vice president now. So, um, that goes on and then, uh, Hallmark goes, catches up with Van Dam. It's going to kill him. Van Dam, Hits him with a super soaker filled with lighter fluid, and the Zippo lighter oh sets him God. on fire. Another big time. immolation scene yep. in a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. Yep. 
Yep. And then uh, Hallmark comes back. Yeah. He's like, you knew he would. Oh, dude, he was all You're, burnt to a Yeah, you'd and, see, you'd have to see what he looked like, all horribly burnt. Yep, melty, and uh, he dies. The vice president was about to whoop some ass when uh, Powers Booth was threatening the little girl. He got up, and everyone had to be like, no, vice president, Mr. Vice President, <laughs> no, don't do it. There's a goal, but then Chicago scores again, so then it's down 4-3. <laughs> An think exciting game. Everything's going to just blow up. Van Damme's walking down uh, the the seats, chasing after some more baddies, and he tr- like kind of trips, falls, starts bowling himself down over people, <laughs> down to the, uh, to the front row. For whatever reason, okay, maybe you can answer this for me. Mm-hmm. Tolliver gets pulled from the game after the Chicago goal. He's like, I'm not feeling well, 104-degree fe- uh, fever. He's got the flu, and he's like, I want out. And so uh, he's in the back with like uh, oxygen, oxygen yeah, yeah, an oxygen mask on. Van Damme sees him. He's in full gear, basically, breathing. Van Damme puts the goalie gear on, mm-hmm. and, and when – Here's something that I neglected to mention. In the beginning when he's with his son in the Penguins locker room, Van Dam makes mention, you know, through like a little one-liner after his son says, oh, yeah, my dad played, that he played semi-pro in Canada as a goalie. So why the hell did Van Dam like, I know he was being chased by mm-hmm. the dudes, but why did you put the goalie get up on <laughs> and then go out <laughs> into the hockey arena and play? I don't. It was the perfect disguise, I guess. You know, no one I, suspects uh, the goalie. No one suspects the goalie. <laughs> so Van Dam goes out. He uh, does a okay job as a goalie. He, I, yeah, he has the uh, the save of the save of the season. Right? Yeah, save of the <laughs> season. I never realized how much I wanted a Van Dam hockey movie. <laughs> like, not just hey, I'm gonna save the whole seventeen thousand people. Like, I just want to see Van Dam playing hockey. Watching, yeah, watching him. Oh, please don't go my way. Please don't go my yeah, way. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and uh, Van Dam realizes there's like basically only four minutes left in the game, so he right crosses a dude <laughs> and uh, gets taken out for a personal misconduct penalty. He spends about. Five minutes taking off all that equipment. Yeah, <laughs> you know it was pretty absolutely... realistic, actually. Yeah, dude, he was, he was like, <laughs> he had oh, to like okay. slice off the laces of his. Uh, yep, slice off the laces. And, of yeah, the, yep, his skates, and so then a dude comes in. I, you know, I wanted to check to see if this dude. I thought he played in uh, Jason Goes to Hell. He he looked really familiar. Oh, I've but seen I, I so long. Probably have no clue uh, if, if it's true or not. Which he, guy? Uh, the guy that basically gets his hand punctured. In oh, that the crazy black guy, machine. the one in the like the yeah. Hawaiian like shirt, the, in the cool rock shirt. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the rock got his influence from this movie. That shirt, <laughs> the five hundred dollars shirt. He kicked the one guy in the neck with an ice skate. I, yeah, yeah, he did, man. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, guess who saves the game? Luke Robitaille with like zero <laughs> seconds. He scores. And so then we go into sudden death. Yep, the titular hey, oh, line. The titular yep. line of the movie, and it's said like three times uh-huh. right here. And on a giant uh, and, jumbotron. Yep, on the jumbotron right there. And uh, Van Damme ends up making a bomb somehow. Like, yeah, I don't even know how he, you know, he read the anarchist cookbook or something. Yep, that's exactly it. He makes this bomb. Goes out onto the roof of the arena. <laughs> it's he's doing some American Ninja Warrior stuff. Yeah, trying to uh, Tom Clancy these fools and not get caught. <laughs> you it, know he was a really good fireman. Yeah, he was. I think dude. he missed he his calling beyond and uh, above and beyond his <laughs> his call of duty, big time. A really he, good fire inspector. Pretty, it kicked the uh, crap out of some dude, and the dude ended up falling off the arena. It was like, that dude died. They, like, slid off of it. <laughs> and then, like, there was a shot, like, the dude, the the computer hacker dude was, like, playing Doom. Yeah, he was playing or, Doom. Was it Doom? <laughs> it was I, Doom. I was, yeah, yeah. It <laughs> cuts it, and then you hear, like, the gunshot go off, and it's like, whoa, trying to s- make you jump a little bit there. Then the roof starts opening up, and we realize the, the reason why is for Powers Booth to escape. That was a really cool, scary scene. There was another dude on the roof. They end up fighting really close to the edge. Van Damme almost falls to his death. The dude almost falls to his death. 
The dude ends up hanging on one of the light fixtures. Yeah, try, trying to swing back onto the edge. Yep, and he swings, lets go, but he misses and falls and lands on top of the big giant jumbotron, <laughs> and that just explodes, and that's the start of everyone going, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Finally, uh, people notice that there's some sort of horrific... Like, you would think that at some point during the hockey game, they'd be like, all right, let's go into the presidential booth and see how the right, vice yeah, president exactly, is doing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They would have done something like that. Or a lot of people have been like, why the fuck is the uh, roof opening up? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> is there two dudes fighting up there? That looks like two dudes fighting up there. Nope. No one. Everyone was so involved with the uh, game seven. It was game seven. And yeah, so that's that. true. As a hockey fan, I, I can't blame them. I, I probably would have been too. That's going on. There's uh, some explosions and uh, Van Dam basically causing panic when he jumps off and he writes another Shawn Michael reference. He yeah. Rest- he, he WrestleMania <laughs> sevens it or what, what, what was it? What's uh, what was if, it seven? No, it wasn't seven. I was going to say it was later, right? Yeah, it was later. Well, anyway, he does the uh, Shawn Michaels WrestleMania entrance and, uh, as opposed to the uh, one bad guy who did the uh, Owen Hart entrance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, yep. Owen. Yep. And uh, somehow he got lucky and knew that this little uh, basically zip cord went right to the vice presidential yeah. suite. Yeah, it was it was a sky cam or something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yep. And he, he throws the homemade bomb on top, <laughs> blows a hole through the suite, jumps in. Basically kills a bunch of dudes. (laughs) Powers Booth ends up escaping, and he's like, huh, I wonder how many of these you disconnected. And so he starts flipping switches of the C4, and he gets one, and it was the bathroom C4. (laughs) Yeah, it was was just like like, one. Oh, man. Cherry bomb in the toilet. Yep, and (laughs) those poor people (laughs) just got hit with shit water. Dookie. All the meanwhile, the son is still sitting in his seat, even though the arena is empty by now. <laughs> he doesn't move. And uh, Van Dam gets to him. He's like, I, I didn't move, Dad. I listened to you. <laughs> even if the whole building was blowing up like that. And uh, Van Dam's talking to uh, basically a secret service a, agent. Yeah, a again, real one. A real one who's not in on it. Powers Booth puts on a disguise, a fake mustache, a really bad wig, <laughs> and um, a Pittsburgh Penguins jacket. He probably looked like one of your dad's friends. <laughs> if like, you saw him, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's Steve's dad for sure, man. <laughs> uh, but guess who notices that, dude? The little girl the because girl. of the stamp she on the hand. She stamped his hand. She stamped his hand. She's like, that's him. That's him. She but walks right she up walks to right him. She walks right up to him. Stupid girl. And uh, he takes her. They go running away. They end up back up at the top of the arena again. <laughs> Van Dam makes chase after him. They fight, and it's a good fight. Yeah, uh, Powers Booth's just like, "I'm gonna make you watch your daughter die." And he goes to shoot. Van Dam jumps in the way, gets shot in the shoulder. Powers Booth takes off in the helicopter. He's laughing. He's with Shawn Michaels. They're laughing. <laughs> and uh, this Van Damme... next scene. <laughs> oh yep. my! This scene. Goodness. Van, Van Dam jumps. He like gets onto the helicopter ladder and uh, shoots up into the helicopter. Kills Shawn Michaels. Kills the pilot. Powers Booth is trying his best <laughs> to reach and get the yeah, throttle. Yeah, like it goes straight up. Yep, it goes. Yeah, falls. it is vertical, <laughs> and it falls right through the slot. All the meanwhile, Van Dam and Powers Booth make eye contact with one another, and it lands in the ice yeah, it, and just. It, he heard like a blood curdling scream as he falls. Yep. Oh, that, oh! yep. Yep. Oh my God! It was like. Something out of Looney Tunes. Oh, dude, it, yeah. was so it was so great. ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was, man. And um, oh man, uh, the son's like, my dad's a fireman. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes in the ambulance, and it's like, bye, end of movie. Yeah. Do 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 do. Another know. one. Another one. <laughs> yeah. Another. Like no, no ending whatsoever. Just it's a punch just out like, ending, like no resolution yep. with the ex-wife. Throws the him right in the ambulance. Credits. <laughs> That's oh, it. Another thing that I totally forgot what they were doing through the whole movie, like, was the little girl was learning sign language. Oh, so yeah. she learned I love you to uh, 
her dad and she was doing it to him. And the brother's like, she just wants to be deaf when she grows up. <laughs> and uh, after Van Dam is the goalie, he looks at his son and does it to yeah. him. And his son's like, what? <laughs> uh, one thing that I think they really missed out was uh, Van Dam should have definitely done the splits as goalie. Yes. And uh, blocked, Holy the, shit. blocked the shot that way. Uh, they they really should have done it because there was no splits in this. No, none whatsoever. There was headbutts, there was groin headbutts. attacks. Yeah, I think he screamed no a couple times. Yeah, yeah, I I would say so. I wasn't paying so much attention to it uh, because I was so still like lost in the movie and how ridiculous yeah, it was. Yeah, this movie. Oh, there was a really good uh, drop kick too that he did against the dude in the rock inspired. Uh, yeah, man. Shirt. Yeah, yep, yeah. Had exactly. like a standing drop kick. Yeah, it was. It was. This movie was definitely sports entertainment, man. Yes. It really was. So uh, out of 10 Van Damme splits, what would you give it? I would give it 7.5. Very enjoyable romp. Hilarious, yeah. hilarious movie. Oh, Powers yeah, Booth really helped a lot, too, as the main uh, main baddie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think I would have to agree with you on that. I'd probably give it a 7 or 7.5. A little long for what it, it was. ends up doing. Like it did um it didn't really like I wasn't like rolling my eyes and like skipping ahead and stuff though. Right, um, yeah. No, it was it kinda went fast. Actually. I mean for a movie was... that's like uh scene for scene, character for character, diehard clone, it was very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Especially definitely. well like well like well why don't we take the premise of Die Hard and make it five times more ridiculous well by having it during a hockey game with the vice president and you know like <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, definitely, definitely unique. Based, I want to read that story. Yeah, story I know. Me too, on... man. I, I really want to read it now as well. That uh, that was crazy. So let's get into a little bit of uh, trivia here. Yarmir Yager wasn't happy that the hockey player wearing his number sixty eight was on the ice for three of the opposing team's goals, making him a minus three. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. According to writer Randy Feldman, he wrote the first draft of the screenplay for this movie as a comedy action movie parody. The only scene that remained in the finished film was the scene where Van Damme fights the penguin mascot. See? <laughs> That's, uh, it all makes yep. for, That really does. That was something out of a. Yep. And then the scene where he gets swapped out with a goalie was just something oh, right yeah, out of the, the naked gun. Yeah. Like where he yeah, was the totally. umpire. Yeah, uh, man. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and Bruce Willis were considered for the role of Darren McCord, but all three turned the role down before Van Damme got the part. Schwarzenegger turned down the role because he had already filmed True Lies and Junior back-to-back. Stallone turned the role down because he didn't like the quality of the script. (laughs) Willis turned the part down because he was already working on Die Hard with a Vengeance. There you go. He's already involved in a Die Hard film. Yep. The original script called for the Penguins to play the L.A. Kings. The announcer used in the movie is actually the Pittsburgh Penguins' real announcer, Mike Lang. He also used some of his trademark sayings such as, Scratch my back with a hacksaw, and call Arnold Slick and Turtle Crick. (laughs) The color commentator is also the current Penguins radio play-by-play man, Paul Steigerwald. Several members of the Pittsburgh Penguins make appearances in the movie. You don't say. The most prominent member was Luke Robitaille, who (laughs) scored the game-tying goal. Marcus Naslin... Virtually an NHL unknown at the time, but later a league superstar was with the Vancouver Canucks, also appears. The Chicago Blackhawks were played by the Cleveland Lumberjacks, Pittsburgh's <laughs> IHL affiliate at the time. Huh. Ian Morin, a Lumberjack at the time, now in the NHL, played Chris Chelios. Oh, that's funny. Oh, no kidding. So that was Chelly. Was it Chelly that I think uh, Van Dam was supposed to hit? The film was shot during the NHL lockout during the 94-95 hockey season, which was finally resolved later that year. While shooting inside of the Civic Arena, in some sections there were cardboard cutouts of people because production didn't have enough money to pay no. any more extras. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. I have to look out for that. Body count was 36. That's Yeah, that makes sense. James Woods was originally considered for the role of Joshua Foss, but he turned down the part because he didn't like the direction of the character. Dude, that's so funny because I could totally picture James yeah. Woods being in this. Uh, yeah, totally. Peter Hyams wasn't interested in making the film when he first heard about it, thinking it was a lame idea for an action film. But Jean-Claude Van Damme recruited Hyams after accepting the lead role, and Hyams liked Van Damme's ideas for the film enough to agree to sign on as director. 
It's weird how much pull he had. Like, uh, yeah, man, seriously, Van Damme in the nineties was just crazy. Yeah, like I mean, the oh, pull that he I has. don't like this film in this direction. I will edit it. Yeah, I, 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 give me the film. I will edit it. <laughs> All right, Van Damme. Despite playing the action hero, Van Damme doesn't fight a henchman until thirty-seven minutes into the film. Yeah, yeah, man. The Penguins and Blackhawks actually met in the Stanley Cup Finals once in real life. In 1992, the Penguins swept the Blackhawks in four straight games to capture their second straight Stanley Cup championship following the film's release. The Penguins would not win another Stanley Cup until 2009 and 2016, (laughs) respectively, and would not appear in the Stanley Cup Finals again until 2008. Wow. So basically, yeah, sudden death (laughs) cursed them. That's what happens when you blow up a helicopter in the arena. Yeah. The role of Emily McCord was originally offered to Mara Wilson, but her parents forbade her from accepting it due to the script's violent content. What? (laughs) Yeah, that is weird. The goalie equipment and uniform number 35 used by Tolliver is the actual equipment designs of Tom Barrasso, the Penguins goalie at the time. Hmm. Jean-Claude Van Damme was not the first choice for the part of troubled ex-fighter Darren McCord. Well, we already know that from other trivia. At no point in the film is the character name of Powers Booth mentioned. Yeah, they never yeah, did. No, they never did. Fifteen years after the film's release, Mellon Arena was demolished and replaced with PPG Paints Arena. Oh, that's sad. Grand L. Bush, Giancarlo Esposito, and John Marshall Jones were each considered for the part of Agent Hallmark before Dorian Harewood got the part. Hmm. Grand L. Bush was uh, Belrog, right? In uh, Street Fighter, I believe. I think you're right. It is set and filmed in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in Middletown, New York, in 98 days on August 29th and December 7th, 1994. It's a pretty short amount of uh, filming. Yeah, 98 man. days. Full name of Jean-Claude Van Damme's character is revealed to be Darren Francis Thomas McCord when Joshua Foss interrogates Emily McCord. Jeff Jimerson, oh, must be related. <laughs> Known for singing the national anthem before every Penguins home game, has a cameo and is credited as anthem singer. Huh. I didn't know that. It's my it's my great uncle. <laughs> After the film did poorly at the box office, Whitney Wright didn't do any acting projects for 11 years until Sisters. Huh. The more you know. Mm-hmm. The film set in a hockey stadium was written by Gene Quintano based on a story by Karen Elise Baldwin, the wife of Pittsburgh Penguins owner Howard Baldwin, that... who was the producer. <laughs> that makes so that, much sense. Yep. <laughs> that is awesome. Following the film's release, the Penguins would win two more Stanley Cups, defeating... Uh, well, we're not going to talk about that. I, that was a sad, sad memory. <laughs> a sequel to the film had been written and was planned for a fall 1997 release. But after the film underperformed at the box office, the project was scrapped. So no Sadness. sudden death to... The Chicago Blackhawks would win the stand. Oh, my gosh. Who cares? <laughs> Director trademark a character named Spoda. So there you have it. That's the trivia. There that was that go. was a lot of like repeat trivia. Yeah, that might have been the the first time in a Van Damme film that we've seen some repeated trivia. Hmm. I think there's like one or two that like involve other segments, but yeah, that's just like several ones that were just the same fact over and over again. Yeah. All right, moving on to some quotes. Is it's it... so loud in here, I can barely hear myself think. <laughs> You don't have to think, Mike. It's hockey. <laughs> yeah, they really hammered in the fact that uh, hockey is for dumb dumbs. Yeah, <laughs> man, they really did. It's like you know, Neanderthal on yeah, skates Neanderthal for forty million ice, dollars. Yeah. I'm having a bad day. What do you want? What do I want? World peace and into bigotry and no more <laughs> mini malls. <laughs> what am I gonna get? And I'm gonna get it. That, boys and girls, is really hot. (laughs) What is your objective? My objective? Uh, I get funny all over when you talk like that. (laughs) That made me uncomfortable. Me too. A little bit. He hit his head on the ice. He hit it so hard that his kids will be born dizzy. (laughs) That was such a, like, hockey player announcer line, too. (laughs) Yep. Hey, that's Brad Tolliver. Dad, he doesn't have a rocking chair. <laughs> a what? <laughs> My dad said you should be sitting in a rocking chair instead of on the ice. Oh, my gosh. Ça va. Bonjour. How are you going to do it tonight? 
We are going to fuck them up. <laughs> Dad, what did he say? He thinks uh, they're going to win. <laughs> You're out of your mind. Me? Ha! I'm not the one paying some Neanderthal $40 million to skate up and down on a slab of ice. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because they were like the lowest paid professional sports Yeah, I know, right? And... Yeah, exactly. I was thinking, oh, man, this is obviously before the salary cap. Yeah. Fuck, you owe me a Mother's Day card. <laughs> Favorite line in the movie. May I help you? This is Matthew Hallmark, Secret Service. Put the vice president on. Hallmark? Huh. Well. I see they care enough to send their very best. <laughs> Gee, I never heard that one before. I did like that they yeah. said he put that in the in the film. Hello, hello, Emily. <laughs> Don't let them know it's me. I'll get you out. I'll take you home. I promise. Look around and tell me how many people are there. Twelve. Well, wasn't that sweet? She included <laughs> me, Tom. Now. You tell me what an AOP is or I'm going to shoot this cute little pumpkin. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen good. If you touch her, you look at her cross-eyed, you lose. <laughs> How do you figure that, fireman? Okay, here's the game and here are the rules. You've got your hostages and you've got your bombs, so you get your money. I'm going to try to stop you, but I don't want anyone to get hurt. You stop me, you win. I get your bombs, I win. That's the game I'm going to play, you piece of shit. Hmm. Now, if you touch her, the game's off. Then I'll come after you. You'll have to kill me in front of everybody in this arena. There will be panic in the Secret Service, SWAT, the fucking Navy will have to come in here. Hmm. Then you don't get your money. You lose, pal. Well, that's not bad for a civil servant. <laughs> oh, by the way, in the Secret Service, AOP is assault on principle. In this case, our esteemed vice president. I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, now, Tom, come on. If we're going to play, you got to play nice. So you go run your little ass off. I know where the bombs are, so I know where you're going. Then come and get me. <laughs> what kind of lunatic are you? Ha, huh, the best kind. <laughs> go ahead. Dead heroes get the best funerals. <laughs> that was a good line. Yeah, Powers Booth had all the best lines in the movie. Have you had any contact with the aggressors? I killed two. Is that contact? <laughs> that agent's name was Eddie Kaline. He has a five-year-old boy, a three-year-old little girl, and his wife's pregnant. I'll send a card. <laughs> I know just what you're thinking. Evaluate the situation, calculate potential losses, and take appropriate action. Well, let me do that for you. Situation is hopeless. Losses would be unacceptable. So the appropriate action is for you to do nothing and keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> they haven't moved a dime. You you know, I, I don't think they believe you. They are going to sacrifice a life to test my will. I'm truly disappointed. Nobody does anything these days because it's right. They only do it if you make them. Would you like to vote on who gets the distinction of demonstrating my resolve? You're not hmm. giving them enough time. I told you it couldn't be done that quickly. Oh. You watch how much they accomplish during the next period. Now, would you all agree that the mayor's wife has been most annoying? <laughs> <laughs> the mayor has decided not to run for re-election <laughs> after he shot yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Enough bombs have been planted in the building to stop all the clocks in the hemisphere. You'll die with us. Could be. <laughs> I don't think anyone with manicured fingernails wearing a $10,000 wristwatch is planning on blowing himself up. <laughs> $15,000 wristwatch. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like you. When I make up my mind, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> don't move. If the building is falling down around you, you don't move. <laughs> Please, he needs a doctor. Pop, pop. Not anymore. <laughs> you have no idea of the complexity. I had an idea. I had this idea. <laughs> and we were going to make it work or we we're going to die trying. You will call the president, and on Flash President's priority, he will call the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Treasury. Then banks will be notified, and the money will begin to move. Or it won't. And if it doesn't, when the game ends, everyone in this box and in this arena will die by explosion, fire, and panic. Don't you move. If you need to piss, you sit here and go in your pants. It'll <laughs> serve you right. But if the dome is falling down around your ass, don't move. Understand? Sure, I'll remember. 
And that's it. That's all they had. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we're done with Sudden Death. We hope you enjoyed that. Moving on, can you take a wild guess what's next? Um, oh, geez. This is around the time. I'll, I'll uh, give you a hint. We're going into 96, and uh, it's basically going to try to be a remake with a bigger budget. Oh, geez. You got me. Go ahead. The Quest. Yes! Yeah, we have the quest next, and uh, I'm pretty excited. I think I haven't seen this since 1996. Yeah, same here. So I'm 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 really really looking forward to it. I uh, I can't wait. We'll see how it goes, and uh, yeah, then we're gonna start actually getting into the late 90s. Where this is where where really, it's a total blank zone for me. Yeah, like... where where things start to go awry for Van Damme <laughs> and. Uh, He's not really making theater movies. Oh, yeah, anymore. around 1998 is where I uh, he fell off yeah, the radar for me. Yeah, yeah, we uh, basically really Double Team and Universal Soldier: The Return are kind of like the only ones that are still in theater, mm-hmm. and uh, then it just goes really bad. But he's already made his money. I didn't realize how much money Van Damme made. Yeah. He made a He was a really money, hard uh, customer when it came to contract negotiation. Yeah. Yep. Smart guy. Yeah. All right. Well, we hope you guys enjoy that episode. If you like what we do, please rate us five stars on iTunes. If you really love us, please go on patreon.com slash pod bros and donate there. That helps us out tremendously. Or you can go on Amazon using our link. Doesn't cost you anything, but helps us out in the long run. Also, be on the lookout in the near future of a great new YouTube series starring Uh, Jeff and myself called Bone Apple Tea with Jeff and John. (laughs) We hope you guys enjoy it. I'll leave it uh, at that. We we do have a Pod Bros YouTube account that mostly is just uh, videos, audio video, well, audio of Dave telling us what comics come out for the week. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to expand. Up, yeah. Expand the pod bros brand. So be on the lookout for that. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, how should we, how should we end this one? Um, Probably by uh, setting each other on fire with a uh, super soaker. Sounds good. All right. Uh, I'll go first. Okay. J- wait, no, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, stay in your seat. <laughs> I don't care if you even have to piss. <laughs> don't get so worked up. They'll win. <laughs> <laughs>